What is up, everybody, and welcome back to Tar Heel Illustrated. Com. I'm Jacob Turner. He's Andrew Jones. And AJ, we're here for another episode of the UNC football show. We're going to be previewing Carolina's matchup with Georgia Tech a little bit later on, as we always do. 8 p.m. kick in Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta. Uh, that game will be on ACC Network. But make sure you guys stay tuned because we will obviously be previewing that. But we got a whole rundown to go through before we do so. And AJ, before we dive into it, the show is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Big thank you to them for continuing to sponsor this show and long may it continue. But I want to start where we typically start on these shows, because again, I said it last week, this is, this is what the fans want to know, AJ. Everybody's always concerned and wondering about injuries, who's unavailable, who's not available. Carolina and Mac Brown obviously does a very good job of letting the media know for the most part on Monday with a few exceptions going back to the Kobe pace or injury and how that shaked out, which we've already talked about on a podcast previously. So we won't rehash that, but what can you let us in on in terms of injuries? Because I know there is one new player on the, on the list now that is out for the season. Yeah. Well, also they just, um, just just in case someone there is list pays attention. They, we, they didn't know about Kobe. He was injured the day after the press conference. So, Oh yeah. yeah that's yeah. why. And we knew about we it. We didn't know had, for a while. We just, couldn't. we knew about it, but we agreed yeah. to hold it yeah. to when, you know, about an hour, hour and a half before the start of the game. Yeah. Jacoby Cowan's out for the season and we hadn't seen him much lately. And, you know, he looked pretty good in fall camp. And I thought that Bo Atkinson had kind of leaped over him, jumped him in the depth chart. And then that played itself out. Although, Cowan got some snaps in the first few games and played well in the limited amount of time he had. He certainly gives them a lot of depth there, but he's now out for the year with an upper body injury. And of course, Liam Boyd, the kickoff specialist, Mm -hmm. the the second team kickoff specialist is going to be monitored this week. He has a lower in a body injury, um, got, Got just injured himself, digging himself up, doing some drills, doing a kicking drill, I guess it was. And mm-hmm. we'll see what happens as it stands right now. They're down to their third string kickoff specialist and their third string punter. So I don't, that's a first for me. I've never covered yeah, that before. You don't see that very often, do you? And as I wrote in my column the other night, when you, when you, uh, bench your punter mid game, it's not a good night for you. Yeah, and that was the case not. the other night. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But 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 also just to clarify as well, Tom McGinnis and Cole Maynard are battling. They're competing this week to see who punts Saturday. So it's not like they just said the hell with Tom McGinnis. He's going to compete. Yeah. He's new at this. He he deserves an opportunity to learn from it and get better because they brought him in for a reason. And he'll probably more than likely be the punter of the future. So he had a bad game. OK, let's see how you can fix it and move forward, because he wasn't the only one that had a bad game the other night. No, it was not. And that's a heck of a segue, AJ, because I, I do want to talk about a little bit more. We're not going to spend too much time on it, but there are certain elements of of kind of the fallout from the UVA game that we need to discuss and that were talked about either on Twitter everywhere, message boards, or you know, even certain things that we'll talk about that Mac and some of the coaches obviously talked about this week as well. But I want to start with um, Omarion Hampton not running the ball in the second half um, as much as obviously – every offensive coordinator in the Carolina fan base um, agrees that they should have ran more in the second half. I think the stats back that up. I know Mac talked about it a little bit. And when you look at how the game, you know, went, I think in hindsight, it would have been better to run the ball, especially with how Amarion Hampton um, was playing, but it wasn't the case. And, you know, when you lose, you're going to be open to criticism as a coaching staff when certain things like that after a loss don't necessarily Makes sense. So I know Mac early this yeah. week pretty much said they should have ran the ball more. I know some of his comments on why the adjustments weren't made in game were interesting, I guess. And I'm not trying to, you know, bash him or criticize him. I just, that's just my opinion on some of the reasons he said that they didn't switch it up. I just thought it was kind of interesting. But from being at the press conferences, is it safe to say that the coaching staff kind of said, yeah, we might have screwed that one up a little bit? Yeah. I think so. I did a drop about it as well that we ran on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, a lot of offensive coordinators in the fan base. I like how you said that. That's pretty good because I think <laughs> and Mac, there are. It's every fan base, Mac, not just Carolina fans. I'll go ahead. And say yeah, that. I know that. Yeah, Mac yeah. has almost damn near said that too a couple of times. Yeah, he has a bite his tongue. Yeah. I, I think in this case that all those people that were calling for more Marion runs were correct. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, it, I agree. It is. Look. Sometimes I'm not great. Sometimes you're not great. 
or even good at what we do. Sometimes yeah. we have, sometimes I write a bad piece with typos. Lord knows my Twitter typos are all over the place. And sometimes people don't like your takes or my takes on these. Some people didn't like the fact that I criticized the, the fans the other night uh, for their <laughs> performance in the game as well. Whatever. State, state fans and state fans love it. State fans love it. Well, I mean, that <laughs> I should say thing. not state fans, state Twitter accounts. Love yeah. It, but <laughs> they, they get it. They get, they get the hangout banner for, for that right <laughs> yeah just a um, just a tone deaf way to respond but uh, keep going keep going i just thought it was uh, hilarious personally i think it's thing. great because i love fans throwing that kind of crap at each other yeah that makes it makes it, it fun. fun you know what i mean it makes it fun it, they were right and mac and chip acknowledged it uh chip even said and i've listened to it three times i was sitting right in front of him when he said it and i've listened to it three times he said that cost us a game not running omari anymore and they had opportunities they ran him five times in the second half. He gained 36 yards. One run went for zero yards. So four of the runs went for 36 yards. Mm-hmm. And they had the one zero yard run. And he ran the ball 19 times in the game. Uh, 15 of the runs, I think it was. 14, 15 of the runs went for like six or more yards. Mm-hmm. 14 of the runs went for six or more yards. Only three went for less than four. So... They were getting stuff minimally four yards, five yards, six yards, every time he was touching the ball pretty much. And I think the biggest criticism was the part of the game that I thought was was just where, where they lost. It was mishandled. It was mismanaged. It was mishandled. It was mis-executed. It was misperformed. Everything went bad at the 24-14 mark. I asked Gene Monday, What went wrong at 24-14? Because that's the moment we've seen this defense through the first six games Mm -hmm. step on an opponent, and that's where the the separation starts to really take place. you got a one-in-five team. you got a 10-point lead. You score with nine and a half minutes left in the third quarter. You're basically sending a message, and then you let them go on a 13-play, 74-yard touchdown drive. Yeah, that was completely atypical of anything we've seen from that defense all season, all season. Mm -hmm. And you kind of knew at that moment, okay, they're not pulling away in this game. And if they allow something like that to happen, whatever injection they got at halftime, juice injection, psychological injection, it died when they scored that touchdown. Like it it was short lived. Yeah. So they were going to have to figure out a way to manufacture a win when they weren't out in they just didn't take bring it to the stadium it wasn't going to be there that night that sequence carolina got the ball back ahead 24 21 to me you just run a marion you know the defense is struggling they had a terrible time with those quarterback draws where they were biting on the dive fake dives and stuff like that they just weren't playing well on that side of the ball so run a marion run run, march your way down the field, shorten the game for a change, and get out of there with a W. All they had to do was get a W, they would have moved up. Yeah, Washington didn't score an offensive touchdown against an Arizona State team that is every bit as bad as Virginia, if not worse. They're certainly worse defensively. And Washington doesn't score a touchdown. Michael Penix has like three turnovers, two interceptions and a fumble, and Washington moved up. All they had to do was win. Mm-hmm. All they had to do is win the game. They didn't use a Marion, but they owned up to it. And I think that that's a positive because part of it's, yeah, well, that's obvious, but you got to put yourself in their shoes, it's a little different being in their shoes, how much they're going to give away, what they're going to acknowledge. I've covered a lot of coaches in my career, Jacob, that will come in there on Monday and they don't want anything to do with it. And they get angry when you ask them about it. Yeah. Mac met it head on immediately in his presser. Chip met it head on. And then when I asked Gene about 24-14, he said, ultimately, it's on him. Mm-hmm. So, and it is. That's why you're the coaches. That's why you get paid million dollars plus uh, to be coordinators and a lot more than that to be the head coach. You, it's your job to get that, make that stuff work. Mm-hmm. So, it, it was a bad night for everybody in the program. That's going to happen. Now they have an opportunity to move forward and learn whatever they can from that. Uh, but, I, I, but I will say this, and you asked about the explanation that Matt gave. I'm not... I'm not going to try to cover for them here, but I think that fans need to understand something. When you're sitting in the stands or sitting at home, when the play ends and there's all this time, however much time it is, 18, 22, 35 seconds before the ball snapped again, all you're doing is staring. You're talking with somebody, you're staring, you're taking a sip of something, right? Mm -hmm. For the upstairs, 
when you have your coordinator in the booth and Phil Longo was on the field, a little different. I know that the camera used to catch Mac and Phil talking all the time. All the time. So yeah. Yeah. It's a little, and Mac would express unhappiness over certain calls sometimes. Of course. It's a little more difficult when you're dealing with the headsets and you got a lot of voices on there and the play has to come from the booth down to the sideline and then to the field. Mm-hmm. So you really have a very small window. So I understand what Mac meant when he said, I, I really can't interject in there during those sequences because uh, Chip has his line of thought. He has th- certain things scripted that they want to do against certain sets that Virginia shows. And Virginia was showing a lot of different stuff than it had shown all year. They mm-hmm. had the open, they spent that open week preparing for North Carolina. Yeah. The game plan. Well. So mm-hmm. they gave him a lot of looks on both sides of the ball. Carolina didn't had, hadn't prepared for it. Cause how can you, if you hadn't seen it? So not making an excuse here, but I understand what Max saying. I think he's taking too much of a beating for that. Yeah. Because the average fan has no concept of what goes on. Even mm-hmm. us in the media don't fully grasp it. But I have sat next to with windows, with coaching staffs, and I see what they go through. I've talked to them for years and years and years about these kinds of things. And I he's got about a three or four second window where something like that can get through. And if he has to, if he needs more time than that, it's not going to happen during the course of a drive unless there's a timeout. I do think, though, when Virginia scores 24-21, make cuts it to 24-21, you have that conversation at that time, say, run number 28. Because as I said after the game, and, and you you also agreed and said it too, if they needed him to run for 200 the other night, he could have run for 200 and been oh, good. Yeah, he could have. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I think you're well, right. I, I agree. I think he's – I think they've gotten a little bit too much flack, but that's why I brought the comment up because – when I first heard it, I didn't necessarily agree in a way, but I know, and I know it moves faster during the game. But my thought process was like, well, good Lord, there's a TV timeout every 15 seconds. Just yeah. talk to him. And again, I'm not it's, trying to sit here and be like, they lost this game because they didn't change that approach. I just didn't really, as someone who obviously doesn't understand the ins and outs of offensive coordinator communicating to the coach, I know how fast that goes. So I'm not saying those adjustments necessarily should have been made then. But as somebody who's on the field during the games, there is a ton of time I spend on the field sitting down waiting for play to resume, whether it's TV timeouts and other things that come up that I think something could have been adjusted better. And I think essentially Max kind of agreeing that too. We screwed that up. We should have adjusted it. I think it's, I just didn't necessarily understand maybe where it was coming from with, well, I didn't have enough time to do it. I think there were times in the game to do it, just not during those drives. I completely understand that. Well, let me throw one more thing out at you. And Max said this as well. And I think this makes total sense. And maybe it's easier for me to see this and have it make sense than than an emotionally invested fan. But Mm -hmm. I think part of it, and he said, Chip, man, just we slash Chip, you got Drake May out there. Yeah, I I did that. You're struggling to get the ball in the end zone. He's having a Mm -hmm. tough night, so obviously it would make sense for Mario But there's also sort of that Caleb Love, Love theory that Brady Manick used to chuckle at. Well, if he misses his first 18, I know the 19th is going through and then he hits 10 in a row. Mm -hmm. There had to be part of that when you've got that weapon out there and you're thinking, man, I can just keep taking strikes and then we could put them out. We could put them away because they're not going to keep scoring. So that's a factor as well. So I, I think that that needs to be taken into consideration for the critics as well. All that said, they should have run a Marion Moore. They acknowledge it that that they should have done that. They owned up to it. I think people need to move on from it. We're doing it here in the show because we have to talk about it because it's part of the news. And this show is about doing storylines of the week. But as far as I'm concerned, when we finish this here in a minute, we move forward. Mm-hmm. They've already moved forward, which we're going to talk about here in the show. And the fans need to hop off that. It yeah. happens yeah, it's, it, this isn't the first time great coaches have made mistakes. This isn't the first time uh, angry fan bases have been angry. They get over it. When next week, people are going to be singing the praises. I, absolutely. And that's how quickly it can it can shift. So, AJ, like you said, we'll move on. I know the team's moved on. So why don't we move on, I think, as a fan base? If you haven't moved on already, just – just move on. We'll see what happens on Saturday in Atlanta, which Just we'll talk about on. a little bit later on. Yeah, there's no point in dwelling on it, man. It is what it is at this point. Um, real quickly, building off that, I'm going to tie the last kind of two things I want to talk about into one. I want to ask you about the mood at the Keenan Football Center, the KFC, as we like to call it, because building off of that, I tweeted it out after the game, and I think a lot of Carolina fans see this now. I don't think maybe they saw it. 
you know, 11 o'clock on uh, Saturday night. But I think now they get it. This team can still reach their goals. And, and I said, I said, look, it, would it be great if Carolina had this amazing undefeated season and competed for a national title? Yeah, but come on, guys, that wasn't going to happen. I mean, you can let you can you can get to that point. And, and again, we talked about it that we thought Carolina it, kid could have a really, really good season. We still think they can have a really good season because of what's ahead of them, because of where they're at right now. That hasn't gone out of the equation. But let's just be a little bit, bit, bit more realistic here. And this comes back to that moving on perspective of. Was it just wasn't going to happen? It, it, Carolina wasn't going to go play Georgia. I, I, I think it could Georgia have, the national title game. Maybe it could. Maybe they make a run well, like TCU. For, but yeah. it, you know, it's it's a stretch to assume that a Carolina team that has never played the national title game in their life is just going to win a national championship. This but year. they could have gone twelve and zero in the regular season. Yes, I, mean, I, I do I, think the, that the other the other day the other night. I guess we're going to still stay on this for just a little bit. The other night was a massive egg. Yeah, it's like the, the other night. The other night was maybe one, the other but you night don't was, expect them to lose that game. Yeah, the other night mm-hmm. was inexcusable. Mm-hmm. They know it. Mm-hmm. I think they very well could have gone undefeated. If they find a way to win that one, like Washington found a way to beat Arizona State, those, and like when that fumble went through the end, when when Armani Chapman, who's made some big plays yeah. this year, and I think you're going to see him on the field a lot more moving forward now. Rightly should, so. Yeah. He made he forced that fumble to Mike Collins. It was a hokey, a former hokey getting a Wahoo there. And that ball went out of the end zone. You had to think, you know, this is just the football gods are saying this is Chapel Hill's year. Mm-hmm. But the problem is this Carolina didn't take advantage of it because they ended up, you know, Drake ended up throwing the pick, I guess, there. Mm-hmm. So or they 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 didn't score on that one. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So they didn't take advantage of it. But that was one of those moments where you think maybe it is that 12 and 0 year. Because you gotta have stuff like that. Yeah, you do have to have in order to like go that. 12 and 0, unless yeah, yeah. you are at the level of talent that Ohio State and Michigan and Alabama and Georgia play with. Mm-hmm. That's a little bit different. They can clobber people all year long. Mm-hmm. So I, I I do I do agree with that. Now, as far as the mood goes, yeah. What is the mood the KFC, like? Because just to say over, this real quickly, AJ, Carolina can still reach a lot of the goals that they would have. Yeah, loved I'm gonna hit on. I'm gonna. Started. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go right a wave in that direction. The wave is the mood. And I think that's part of what the mood is changing into right now. I spent a lot of time over there on Monday. The KFC. I was over there Tuesday. We talked to Cedric Gray, John Copenhaver, Drake May, and Armani Chapman. Got an Armani Chapman piece coming up later this week. And um, I, the mood was kind of, they were in mid-shift, I think. Uh, Cedric acknowledged that there was a hangover from the loss. Sunday was tough. Monday was probably not easy. They go back to class, and there are students who didn't show up because they were on fall break. Uh, hey, what happened, guys? You, you, so it was different. I, th- I don't think where those guys. Where were you? <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't think those guys expected to lose to UVA. Probably not. And they have to, for the first time this year, they have to pick themselves up. Mm-hmm. So the question I asked uh, Drake and Cedric, because they understand the culture there really, really well, is this week about culture and chemistry and leadership and standard that we've heard about so much going back to the spring? And they all said yes. That it is, and I believe it is. So the mood to me is going to ultimately reflect how the leadership and the chemistry and the culture rise to the standard this week. So it's not a tsunami yet. It's just sort of a slow swell. Yeah. And I think that and I think that's probably good. I don't think Mac wants them to be pissed on Tuesday and Wednesday to a point where they exhaust themselves and they aren't fully focused on Georgia tech until Thursday. That's bad because there's a lot of things about this Georgia tech team that are different than before. So they need to be prepared and they're certainly capable of beating the Tar Heels. So I think what you're seeing is a human nature reaction. And if they are all the things that I have believed through the first six games that they were, they will handle this well ultimately, and they might be stronger moving forward. For Mm -hmm. having gone through this now i don't think they need to go through it because they did it at the end of last year yeah but here they are again so what are they made of this is a what are they made of week and so far i would say they said the right things but i can't imagine that they that they they finish practice tuesday in the same mode that they typically finish at Tuesday practice. It's just going to take a little bit of time, but that might be good. It should sting. 
It should last a while. I know it has with the fans. We're still here. Nothing but crap. I, I tweet out stuff during the press conference on Monday for Mac and the two and the two coordinators and people are just firing, firing a uh, cannonball with Twitter. everything. Not it's on Twitter, just, <laughs> light it. It's a civil war cannonball. Like that everything that doesn't sound like Twitter. they're saying. That not sound like so. I get it. And that's good. I mean, mm-hmm. Mac even said you want your fans to be angry when you lose. Mm-hmm. You want them to have hurt when you lose because it means more. I've covered a lot of football games at this school and some of the schools in the area when their team loses and loses again, and there's not a whole lot of anger on Twitter. Like Twitter dies in the fourth quarter. Yeah. It didn't die in the fourth It stayed all night, man. Mm-hmm. I'm driving home at 3.30 in the morning or whatever it was, Sunday morning from the stadium, and my phone's lighting up in the car. And I'm cruising down 540 and still lighting up because some guy – Half sauce is just firing off stuff on Twitter. You know what? Good it's for him. Fun. It's great. Be angry. You should yeah. be angry. Yeah. And and Mac wants you to be angry. I can tell mm-hmm. you right now, he wants you to be angry when something like this happens. And the players are, but the players have to channel things differently because they're the ones that have to get fully regrouped and composed mm-hmm. and ready to take on the next battle. Mm-hmm. A lot of the fans could say, I'm not going to pay attention anymore. I'm just going to turn on the TV at 7.55 Saturday night and see what the heck they do in Atlanta. The team mm-hmm. can't do that. No. So they're they're taking a different course, but that fan course is understood, and they need to understand the player course. And a few days afterward, three days afterward, because I didn't see them Wednesday because we've got when this video comes out, because Wednesday we have – the ACC tip off in Charlotte. So it's all basketball mode Wednesday, which might be good. It's probably good. They keep us away for a day. Mm -hmm. They get a little more insulated. Insulation would be good right now. Oh yeah. No doubt about that. No, but I think, I think you hit the nail on the head there of the fact that the fan base cares is a, in a weird way, a, a prime example of the job that Mac has a good job that Mac has done in coming back. I mean, to get that, we we knew how it was when Fedora left. We knew how it was when Mac came back, but a fan base that care, a fan base that's pissed off and a fan base that's tweeting Tarla Illustrated at 3 30 AM after the game's been over for five hours is is the kind of fan base you want. You don't want fan base to hear from. So yeah. Every angry tweet. I, I read it all. Yeah, yeah, we see I don't reply to most of it because I, I don't have time to get into this long. There's no point in arguing on Twitter, I, AJ. No point. But I no know. Point. And I see our boards. Our boards have been on fire, literally. <laughs> literally so yeah. the anger is a good thing. It, it, it symbolizes that things have headed in the right direction yeah. and expectations were higher. Now, should expectations be high the rest of the way, which I think is our next thing that we're going to talk about? I think that they still should. Mm-hmm. But a little more cautious optimism probably right now than – was the case a week ago when I did a drop and I'm going to acknowledge this again. If Mac and chip have to acknowledge, I'm going to acknowledge I did a drop saying any more style points. Mm -hmm. I assumed that beginning with Virginia, they needed more style points. I had no idea Virginia would come in and whip them. So it happened. So Mm -hmm. that was kind of a silly, silly drop when you think back, but everybody else was thinking that about this team. Oh yeah. Of course. Spread was 24 points. Yeah. So should have won the game. No, no two ways around it. But should have won the game. Yeah. But you know it, what? They've they've got to cut the cord, mm-hmm. and the fans have to at some point at eight o'clock Saturday night and just move forward because they could still achieve things that they rarely achieved in this program. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's a good way to 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 transition to the to the preview because we're going to talk about Georgia Tech here in a second. Big matchup coming up this weekend in Atlanta. Before we do so, I want to give a thank you to Underdog fantasy so guys we're, we're incredibly excited to be partnered and presented by underdog sports and, and you know we've seen a lot of you guys downloading the app which is great using the promo code heal which is fun as well so it's good to see we've got some people out there actually doing it and using our promo code it's links in the description check it out if you haven't but if you haven't already checked them out be sure to do so super easy to use all you have to do is go on the app and pick whether your favorite players will have a higher or lower stat total than what is listed. I've used this example a few times, but considering the fact that Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift are the only thing I see on Sundays now, um, I think we can provide a beautiful example to illustrate how this works. So let's see. Let's say you're betting on now, the- now by the way, I got to dive in, man. Yeah, go ahead. man. Go now, ahead. now Kelsey's dad is doing interviews. Oh, it's unbelievable. What was Taylor Swift like? He said she cleaned up a bunch of trash in the luxury suite. Yeah, so and that's, you know, a real person. good on her, man. <laughs> she must be a real, so I'm going to clean up some trash today and my wife's going to go tell people AJ's a real person. 
It's good to know. Yeah, it's good to know Taylor Swift is a. We got to let Carly. We got to find out from Carly if if Jacob Turner, the Jacob Turner, cleans up trash. That means you're in the same company with T Swift. Yeah, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you that when I get off this podcast because if anybody will uh, does not take any T Swift slander, it is my wife Carly. How nauseating. So. It's already become nauseating, hasn't yeah. it? <laughs> you ain't lying about that, man. It is everywhere to say the least, but. To illustrate how this game works real quick, AJ, let's say Travis Kelsey's number from last week, and let's say 50 yards was the number. And, and you know Taylor Swift was going to be there, so you may feel confident that he's going to be way higher than that number. And that's the example of how this game works. You take the either higher or lower number, and depending on what happens, you can win big. So do that with two to five different players, and you're in business. And if you go five for five, you can even 20 extra money. Sign up today, promo code HEAL. I've said it a million times on this show if you watch it. Promo code HEAL. Links in the description below. Deposit double to buy up to $100. Visit underdogfantasy.com, or you can find them in the app store. store. And uh, yeah, guys, just get involved if you haven't already. Must be 18 plus and present in the state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. If you're concerned with your play, call one 800 Five two two four seven double zero, or visit ncpgambling.org. Again, links in the description. Big thank you to Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring this show. Um, AJ, enough of the uh, Taylor Swift talk. L- let's dive into Georgia Tech this weekend. Again, 8 p.m. kickoff in Bobby Dodd Stadium, ACC Network. A crazy stat that, that I know Mac mentioned on Saturday. I didn't realize just how poor Carolina's been in Atlanta. I knew they've been bad in Atlanta. I didn't realize how bad they've been. Basically just won two of their last 12 games in Atlanta to Georgia Tech, which is just a, a wild stat to say the least. So diving into the Yellow Jackets a little bit more. Three and four on the year, two and two in league play. Currently sitting at seventh in ACC. Wins over at South Carolina State at Wake Forest and at Miami and losses to Louisville, Ole Miss, Bowling Green, and last weekend at home to Boston College. And again, it's weird saying this because Carolina lost last week, but I think, again, I think what we talked about in the preview show going into Virginia was Carolina needed to be Carolina. If Carolina handled their business and played to the standard that they've tried to set, then they would beat Virginia. They didn't do that. They lost the game. And I think what we ultimately said could happen ended up happening with Carolina again, not taking care of business themselves and not playing up to the standard and level that they can. I think it's a similar thing this week. And I know the fact that it's in Atlanta plays a team I've called uh, plays a factor. I've called Georgia tech kind of Carolina's bogey team for lack of a better word, because it just seems like saw it last year. They always have trouble beating the yellow jackets, particularly in Atlanta with that stat. I said a few minutes ago. So I'm not going to focus. I say all that to say I'm not going to go too heavy on the Georgia Tech stats again, because I think, again, this game is about North Carolina again and how they respond to that loss to Virginia. But just diving into a few, they sit number five in total offense in the ACC, about 340 yards per game and sixth in scoring offense or averaging just under 30 points per. This is the interesting stat, AJ, and I tweeted this out earlier today. Dead last in the ACC in total defense, allowing about 452 yards per game in comparison, which kind of surprised me a little bit. Carolina's sitting at 10th in total defense, allowing 370 yards per game. But this is the big stat, and this is going to translate. This is going to transition into my keys for the win. They uh, dead last in the league in rushing yards allowed, averaging 227 yards per game. That's 53 more yards per game than the second to last team in Boston college who they beat last weekend, AJ. So I say all that to say my keys to victory on offense, run the damn ball. That's Carolina's motto. They didn't do it enough against Virginia. AJ, we had to spend 10 minutes on this podcast talking about it. Matt Mac had to spend a few minutes in his Monday presser talking about how they should have ran the ball more run the damn ball. When you see those stats, give it to our and Hampton. And for those who don't know, I'm saying run the damn ball because that's the offensive motto. I'm not, just saying that to say it. That's literally the motto of the offense for it's lack of a better Corey word. Corey Gaynor hat. Yeah. Yeah. Run the damn ball. Take advantage of that. Make adjustments in the game. If need be do a better job of what you did last week with not making adjustments on offense. If it's not working, but run the ball and try to exploit that weakness that Georgia tech. So obviously has, and on the other side of the ball, AJ defensively win the battle up front, two sacks last week, five tackles for loss, which to me actually sounded, I was actually surprised to know they had that many tackles for loss and even that many sacks. Cause I don't remember a ton against Virginia to say, say the least, but win that battle up front. I thought too many times last week, UVA's quarterback had too much time back there in the pocket and was able to pick the defense apart because of that. Win that battle in the trenches again, which Carolina's done a few times this season. We've seen an improved defensive line play, but set the tone up front early. And I think you can beat this Georgia Tech team 
um, relatively handily. But Carolina has to play well, and they have to control what they can control. We'll see what happens on Saturday. So thoughts on the matchup this weekend, and then feel free towards the end just to, to give me your keys to victory if you have anything else. Yeah, well, Virginia was getting rid of the ball quickly, too. So that affected yeah, yeah, the game, sack like said, Their game plan was good. Their game plan was very good. Georgia Tech's going to throw the ball deep more than UVA did. They got more athletes. Mm-hmm. The quarterback's a great athlete, Haynes King. I actually think that the outcome of this game is I'm my phone's blowing up. Sorry about that. Sounds about the right. outcome of this game is, oh, what breaking news. No. <laughs> the outcome of this game is going to be on that side of the ball for Carolina going up against Georgia Tech's offense. Carolina shouldn't have any trouble scoring, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, this, is a, this is a defense that's given up 31 in each of the last two games. They got up some big plays. They've they struggled with the quarterback run on some of those uh, draws, almost like – or, I don't even know how to describe it because it's kind of old school with the with the with the fake dies and stuff. But Carolina kept biting on stuff. I don't think you're going to see that. As, you'll see some of that from Georgia Tech, but Haynes King's going to run. And the difference between King and Tony Musk is Tony Musk's not going to throw on the run. He made direct runs. King's going to roll, and he'll either tuck it in and dart upfield because he's really athletic. Or he's going to throw the ball. If you go back and look at the game when he touched down at Miami, he rolled and rolled and rolled to his right, and I think he threw the ball off his back foot. So, and he still threw it downfield and connected for the game winning score. He's good. Mm-hmm. He's one of the better quarterbacks. That he'll probably be the third best quarterback they faced outside of Rattler and and Van Dyke, and both of them went for over three hundred yards. Mm-hmm. So, and a lot of it was late, but they still did it. I think that's a challenge. I think Georgia Tech can move the ball especially if it's good georgia tech and let's remember georgia tech's like this i thought georgia tech was okay saturday and then it became bad georgia tech about midway through the third quarter and bc pulled away that likely means that good georgia tech and i may quote the great kevin roy because it's a football show which means kevin roy has to make an appearance of course the the damn atlanta falcons are going to run out of the tunnel because that's what he thinks will happen since georgia tech ended up falling apart late in that game the other day. So maybe so. The 10 out of 12 and all of that kind of junk, I mean, stuff happens. Yeah, of course it does. There's like a haunting down there when Carolina goes to – to not just Bobby Dodd Stadium. They lost to them pitifully two years ago in the new dome down there. I know. They have had some cool. bad performances down there in the last couple of years. Yeah, it's, it's a weird – weird. Well, they have two – the they've lost 10 out of 12, mm-hmm. and I've covered both wins – Mm-hmm. One was Max was in 2019 that the heels went down and just smacked them. That was the depth of bad Jeff Collins. Mm-hmm. And then in 2015, the other win down there, Carolina was down 21, nothing. I know. That's and Marquise in. Williams, probably one of the, probably the grittiest performance I've ever seen from a quarterback said, okay, guys. Yeah. Put, put the offense on the back. Yeah. Defense mm-hmm. here and we're going to roll. Yeah. And Carolina can't, this is the largest come from behind victory in program history. And it was there in that place. So even that night, they were getting walloped for a while. Mm-hmm. So they're going to have to figure out a way to limit Haynes King. He can throw the ball, but he also ran for 150-something yards last game. Mm-hmm. He had a 70-yard touchdown run. I think yeah. it was against BC. He's got some good stats this year. I mean, he really does. Well, he I asked – so. we had Armani Chapman and Cedric Gray on Tuesday, and, and I asked them both about dealing with him. Because he's rolling. A lot of guys you could sort of sense by their body language whether they're going to look to throw, throw it away, or tuck and run. With him, you can't. Mm-hmm. He disguises it well. He's a, he's a coach's son. High school. His, his dad's an East Texas high school football coach. Yeah, the dude lives and breathes it, right? Oh, God, does he? So ever, yeah. uh, Cedric and Armani both said, look, this is a major eye discipline game. Mm-hmm. Eye discipline on Haynes King might be the key. And and Armani added that the guys up front have to do the job, which is what you talked about a few minutes ago. Carolina has to be strong up front, and they've got to limit the field availability for Haynes King to run, turn him into a passing quarterback, and then the heels, I think, have a really good chance to have a good day defensively mm-hmm. and allow the offense to do its thing and win fairly convincingly. But that's that's just a theory. I'm not sure how – I haven't done my pick yet for our staff picks because I'm not sure how this thing's going to go. It would not surprise me if Carolina loses because when no. Georgia Tech plays well, they're pretty good. Mm-hmm. They won at Miami. They won at Wake. They were in a tussle go, uh, early in the fourth quarter at Ole Miss before Ole Miss pulled away. 
I mean, who knows what kind of psyche Carolina has if things don't go well early in this game. I think they need to jump out, and then that foot on throat needs to occur. That 24-14 moment, if they deal with one of those in this game, the defense may, needs to make that stand up. The offense needs to get the ball back and score. They need to play complimentary football, which is something that they did the first six games, didn't do Saturday night. So they need to bring that back. Yeah. If they're When they pack – in Chapel Hill and fly everything down to Atlanta, they need to make sure that one of the suitcases is something called a complimentary football. They need to take that to Bobby Dodd Stadium. If they take it to Bobby Dodd Stadium, they're going to win going away. If they don't, it's going to be a battle. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. I completely agree. I, just to get to the picks real quick, I think I said 31-21 North Carolina, I, but I said it in my staff picks. People will see it later this week. I'm not very confident in that because of – the challenge that Georgia Tech presents and just the fact that Carolina does not have a lot of success down there. So I just have a feeling I think Carolina bounces back. I like what I've heard from inside the program this week. I like what I've heard from some of the players, particularly on Tuesday during their press conferences. The message coming out of the KFC right now is a positive one. So I'm expecting a lot better performance on Saturday. and We'll just see what happens. But as a caveat to that, again, it's Atlanta. It's a freaking coin toss. And if, if you're a betting man, you probably take Georgia Tech in this game, don't you? Because of the of the history of this one. But well, I said 31-21. I know you haven't done yours yet, but what do you? If you had to pick, AJ, well, do you think Carolina wins? Yeah, I think they should. They're saying the right things, but I do think this is more a process. I don't think this is one of those deals where everybody shows up Tuesday and it's gone. We're all rocking and rolling now. Yeah. No, I think this is a. I think the sting. This you know when you get stung, kind of wells up a little bit. Yeah, I, I think it's still it's receding right now, but it's still there. You know, it's still there. Mm-hmm. So that's that's kind of what they're going through. And it'll be gone by the time they run out of the tunnel at at Bobby Grant, uh, Bobby Dodd, Grant Field at Bobby Dodd Stadium, which I yep. call the Wrigley Field of college football. Cool. Stadium, it's a man. cool place to watch a game. I just wish they got better support down there because it they once they used to it used to be a great place. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So hopefully they'll have a good crowd and um it, it'll it'll bring out the best in both teams because I, I want to see Carolina – I want to see them have to deal with good Georgia Tech, and I want to see how the Tar Heels respond. Mm-hmm. And they get a win. They do some good things and make some stops defensively, and they make Haynes King an average quarterback maybe. Then mm-hmm. I think that they win this game by a couple of touchdowns. I have not done my pick yet. I haven't even done my five keys yet. It's – again, we're doing it on Tuesday instead of Wednesday. Yeah, I know, because I've got – I'm just swamped this week. It's just around-the-clock yeah. stuff. So one of the good things about the Orioles getting eliminated is I didn't have to watch them in Game 7 of the American League Championship Series last night. I could work instead. So You got to love it. That's though. what I've always said. Being a fan of a terrible baseball team, it never interferes with my job yeah. once, you get to the, once you get to the baseball playoffs. But exactly. it did a little bit this year, but not much. So Is any positive to uh, take away from I think the Heels that. win, but, but – I think this is good. I think this has a chance to be a tough game for them, not because they don't play well, but because Georgia Tech, when it ticks up, they tick up pretty well. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. We'll see what happens this weekend, guys. We want to hear from you all, as always. Get your score predictions in. Reach out to us at Heal Illustrated. Come on our message boards and, and comment on this thread when this, obviously, when this video is out. You can get involved over there if you're a premium subscriber. But just let us know what you think is going to happen. If you think Carolina is going to win, go ahead and like the video below and, and that's the easiest way to do it because we can definitely gauge based on that so aj you'll be in atlanta we'll see what happens on saturday and uh, i guess from a carolina perspective if you're a fan watching this hopefully they bounce back and and get a win and, and maybe get things back on track because there's a lot of winnable games still left this season and a lot of good things the tar heels could do i've been jacob turner he's been andrew jones appreciate y'all watching as always make sure you share hit that notification bell too and uh we'll see you on the next one thanks Thanks.